Here we are once more and again. We have been talking the last three weeks concerning family matters. And we're going to conclude this evening as we um, uh, finish up talking about family matters. And um, we've had, been having some interesting discussions con concerning the family unit and how we as members of uh, our family should be conducting ourselves, should be loving one another and, you know, being family. You know, it's a, it's a blessing to have family. God gives us family. And um, we can't choose our family, but uh, nevertheless, the the ones that God gives us, we gotta we gotta learn how to love each other and you know be there for one another, support one another. We're gonna um, conclude our family matters um, series this evening in hopes that you all that. Uh, especially you all that have been listening uh, to every one of these uh, lessons that you have a blessed uh, Thanksgiving um, and the rest of your holiday season because this is the time when people get time off and you know families join in together and you know it, it's time out for all the all the stresses and all that you know the, the foolishness that that's that's a that's a word we need to get rid of all the foolishness that goes on um uh, within our family we need to get ourselves together and and love each other while we while we still got one another all right um strengthen that bond that we have um we've been talking about some very interesting uh characters in the bible and uh this evening we're gonna be we're gonna begin in um Ruth. We're gonna begin in Ruth chapter number one. It's a very uh, blessed story of uh Naomi and her daughter daughter in law Ruth. And we're gonna see uh how intimate and, and deep our family relationships ought to be. Now, when it comes to relationships nowadays, people don't want to do what it takes to cultivate and strengthen and 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 cause that bond to be unbreakable. People don't want to do what it takes. You know, we, we especially in families, people say, well, you my family and, you know, that's just the way it is. We, we just we family, we family, we family. And and that's the depth of it, just calling each other family because, you know, you're born from the same parents or the same lineage or got the same ancestry and stuff like that. That's, that's part of it, but family goes deeper than just the blood that you share. And we got to, you know, things don't come natural. The enemy don't want us to be on one accord. The enemy don't want us... To see, to, to see us happy and joyful with one another and strengthening and walking in numbers and, you know, holding our, our family unit together. The, the, the enemy wants to see us divided. He wants, he wants to see us broken. He wants to see us at odds against each other when we're spo supposed to be a unit as a family. It's supposed to be as a unit, and that there's power in the family unit. And when we begin to be separated, and, and it, it, a lot of times it starts when one or more of, of that family unit gets selfish. They stop looking at, you know, like um, we talked about last week, we talked about um, uh, Cain and Abel, and how Cain killed his brother Abel. And when God questioned him, he said, am I my brother's keeper? Am I supposed to be, um, am I supposed to know where he at? That he's not in my concern. You know, that's not my concern. I, I ain't, am I supposed to be watching over him all the time? 
But the the truth of the matter is, yes, you should should be concerned. Yes, you should you know the condition of your brother, your family. But when he got selfish, start looking at his own desires, you know, stuff like that, then there there comes division. We gotta be on one accord. We gotta be concerned. We're gonna look at we, tonight. You know, we've been talking about a reconciliation of uh, broken relationships within the family. But tonight we're going to talk about the true intimacy of uh, the family, the true intimacy of the family. And that's missing in, in, in a lot of um, families nowadays, the intimacy, the true intimacy. Can we sit down and talk and, and be understanding of one another? You know, the intimacy of a, of a family relationship. That's what we're going to be talking about this evening. Can we be truthful with one another without taking shots and, and being demeaning of one another and, and, and hurting each other's feelings and, 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 you know, thinking that we are superior to other family members? Can we, can we come together and, and, and realize that we are family and we supposed to have the same care and concern. You know, I supposed to have the same care and concern that everybody else in my family is supposed to have for me. I supposed to have the same for them. So we're going to talk about that intimacy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this with you and then we're going to get into um, Ruth. Um, a lot of households are divided, you know, simply because, I mean, even the structure of it, like, um, you know, just look, just look at a lot of households. You got like back in the day, you had one flow model TV, maybe in, in the, in the living room where the, where the pot belly stove was. And, you know, everybody was in that, that one room, you had one table and everybody in that family, they came to eat at the table. That is an intimate time. See, when Jesus had the last supper, all his disciples, they were eating at the same table and he had an intimate discussion with them all right see you you think about a lot of households now when you bring that happy meal in that 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 faux 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 or 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 whatever whatever you get everybody go to their different little spot they room or or somewhere in the house the den or wherever and there's no conversation nobody sitting there talking amongst one another asking how your day went asking you know what's going on how are things how's the weather you know what's going on in america what's going on in the world you know we don't talk about things like that and 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 so that intimacy is missing all right now think about it too like i said there used to be that little black and white tv you know, that one TV in the house. And um, it didn't have no remote control. So all all y'all that, that grew up during that time, y'all understand that the younger ones was the remote control. Go change that channel. Go put it on three. <laughs> Move that antenna around so, so the picture can get clear. All right. But what I'm trying to say is everybody was in that one room. Everybody, that family unit was right there. All right. And so what we don't, what what we don't think about a whole lot nowadays, oh, that don't matter, that don't matter. But now you go into, you know, some people go, in, I, I done heard stories now. You, they go into their, their kids' room, their kids say, get out of my room. Get out of your room. <laughs> it, it's almost like saying, get out of my house. You ain't got no room. <laughs> Oh Lord! But what I'm saying is, it's it's that separation. That's what, and what I want to bring to your attention, my brothers and sisters, we got to get back to the intimacy of the family unit. Okay. Before I go to Ruth, I wanna I wanna show you something about uh, intimacy. Let's go back to Genesis real quick, and I'm gonna go to uh, Ruth. Something about intimacy, and see, uh, our generation nowadays don't understand when i say intimacy you know 
there's a erotic connotation that comes along with it. People don't even understand people when they use the word intimate. Unless it's talking about a bedroom or something. See, we're not even going there. Intimacy is just getting deeper and understanding one another. Uh, when you have an intimate conversation, you can talk about anything. See, people people in families nowadays, they can't talk about anything. They can't talk about anything because if you say the wrong thing, it's going to be an all-out fight. It's going to be a war. And then you ain't going to talk. So you, you jump around things that you can't talk about and you make believe everything is all right when it's not. Okay, but when you have an intimate relationship with someone, you can share your thoughts and the other person that's listening uh, is not listening just to just to come back with a response. They're listening to show understanding. All right. They're listening just to hear, you know, where you're coming from and try to understand where you're coming from. All right. So um, I want to I want to share this with you um, in uh, Genesis four, Genesis four and one. Uh, I just want to throw this out there and then, you know, since we're talking about intimacy and then we're going to go in, go on in back to Ruth. It says Genesis 4 and 1 says, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain. Y'all see that? Do y'all see that? You see how the Bible um, describes their intimate relationship? He said Adam knew Eve. Now, he wasn't saying he knew her name. He knew where she came from. He knew, you know, had knowledge of her. When he's talking about he knew her, of course, they was doing what it took to procreate. But instead of using the word, you know, I'm trying to keep this PG. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it rated G. We might have some, some underage listeners. <laughs> but... Instead of the Bible using the, the actual word to say, you know, what they, the, the activity, the, the Bible say Adam knew Eve. And see, we got to get back to knowing one another <laughs> on an intimate level. I mean, you know, especially husbands and wives. If you're going if you're gonna to do that kind of activity, at least you got to connect. You got to know each other. You got to know each other okay <laughs> i just want to throw that out there somebody somebody husband and wife and since we talking about family family matters all right husband and wife that's the basis of that that uh that family unit if that husband and wife ain't getting along then them children ain't gonna get along all right and then we talking about other family uh family matters you know your extended family outside that particular household okay but I just want to show you, um, do you even know the people in your house? Let's talk about that family unit, okay? And then, you know, we go forward to our extended family, brothers and sisters, aunts, uncles, and mom and dad, all that, you know, all the, the other family members. Do we even know one another? And sometimes we know too much about each other. That's why we don't like each other. <laughs> oh, Lord. Let me move on. But you got to show understanding. You got to show, you gotta show uh, forgiveness and understanding. You got to show... Uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me deal with Ruth, and I'm going to bring out some adjectives that talk about how families should be. All right. Go to the book of Ruth, which is after Judges, uh, chapter 1. And again, we're talking about the um, the true intimacy of, of the family. When you even say the word family, you I mean, immediately you think about bond. You think about uh, care and concern. You think about closeness, you know, close-knit relationships. You know, when you say family, you know, that holds a lot of weight, brothers and sisters. But when we let the enemy come in and tear us down, destroy our family uh, unity and destroy and separate us and we can't even get along with one another, something wrong with that. Family is a strong bond. Family is a, is a, is, is a, 
a, a high level of loyalty and commitment to one another. Family. All right. So here in the book of Ruth, I'm not going to uh, tell the whole story for lack of uh, time this evening, but you can go back and read it at your leisure. Um, excuse me. Um, uh, there was a man named uh, Elimelech, Elimelech, and his wife was named Naomi. Okay. They had two sons. Malon and Chilion. Alright. And the land they were living in was it was a famine going on. So they moved. They moved to a, a, another land. Alright. And there uh they moved to Moab. And there um their two sons married wives, and the wives were named Ruth and Orpah. Okay, so here we have a man named you know these these names kind of hard, so I'm gonna call him E. <laughs> we got E, and he was married to Naomi. All right, the son's name was uh, they had two sons. Okay, and they married Orpah and Ruth. Now, in the process of time, E passed away. So that's, le that's left uh, Naomi to be a, a widow, right? All right. More years passed. The other two, the two sons passed. So that left Naomi, that left Orpah and Ruth, which were the, Naomi's two daughter-in-laws, all right? So they were going through some uh, trying times. Um, all of their husbands passed. But so Naomi said, um, you know, with all this coming down upon me, what I want y'all young ladies to do, um, and you have my blessing because y'all been so faithful to my sons. Y'all were a blessing to my son. I pray that y'all go on back to your um your mother's homeland and find yourselves husband because even if the lord bless me at this point you know are you gonna wait till they grown till they they are born and they're grown to marry them no see don't don't take yourself through that go back and find yourself some husband all right or after they wept together I, and, and um, you know, they cried together, you know, because they didn't want to leave Naomi. Uh, Orpah left. Orpah went on back. But uh, Ruth had this declaration. And, I, and this, this is so beautiful. It, I mean, it shows the intimacy that, that, that we're talking about this evening. Ruth had this declaration in Ruth chapter 1, verse 16. Um, Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you, nor to return from falling after you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. And your God will be my God. Where you die, I'm going to die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. Now you do can you feel this this daughter in laws daughter in laws all right and and we always talk about blood thicker than water now if you don't have that true intimacy and loyalty to your blood, that blood ain't thicker than water it's just running through your vein <laughs> and a lot of families nowadays are not on one accord cannot depend on one another because they ain't committed to one another they ain't loyal to one another they don't think beyond their own selfishness and think about the needs and and, and concerns of their their family members it, you know it ain't as tight it ain't that tight but we what we trying to do is build the family relationship through commitment 
And we we talking about building that family structure uh, by being loyal to one another and your family. Being loyal to your family. All right. Listen. Ruth said, you know, Naomi kept telling them to go, you know, not not being mean and nasty, but, you know, go live your life and be fruitful. You still young ladies. You still got a whole life ahead of you. You can't just, you know, moan the, the death of your husbands and, 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 and feel like it's the end of the world and, and, and stay here with me. You got to go and live your life and be fruitful. She was giving them some some healthy advice. Okay, as young men, women, you know, in in back then, you know, they wasn't as independent <laughs> as they are now. <laughs> I don't need no man. I got Jesus. <laughs> oh Lord! But anyway, they wasn't as independent back then. They had the family structure. They, that the man was the head of that household, and then you know the wife, and then the children. All right, that structure. All right. But, um, so Naomi told him to go. But when, when Ruth said, don't ask me again to leave you. I done made up my mind. Listen at this. I done made up my mind. Uh, I'm going to go where you go. <laughs> where you live, that's where I'm going to live. Your people going to be my people. And your God going to be my God. See, in a, in, a, in a country of Moab, they had other false gods. They had other idol gods. But Ruth made up in her mind. I'm leaving all this behind. I'm going to dedicate myself to you as my mother-in-law. And, and, and we're going to go deeper than that when we go to our next scripture. But she, she didn't treat her like a mother-in-law she treated her like a mother do, do you see that relationship do you see that that relationship how deep that relationship even though they didn't you know naturally have any uh blood that was the same because uh ruth came into the family by marriage but listen she treated her like a mother now you got children these days that don't treat their mother that with, with with that much commitment. Oh Lord, we we can get into you know these relationships between parents and children, and and all of them ain't healthy. And 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 I'm gonna tell you this: it ain't always like young children and their parents. Some there are some 50, 60 year old children can't respect and don't respect their 70, 80, 90 year old parents. Now you know that's a shame. Grown adults. And something. And we've been talking about this the whole time, talking about that something that has damaged that relationship. So much so that that child or, or that parent, whoever got the 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 alt against one another cannot find it in their heart to, to forgive even if it's blood but here we got Ruth saying where you go I'm going where you stay I'ma stay your people gonna be my people <laughs> that's commitment y'all that's dedication that's loyalty your God going to be my God. Where you die, I'm going to die. And the only thing going to separate us is death. If God allowed allow me to die, then that's, that's what's going to separate us. That's, that's loyalty. Now, how many of y'all got that kind of, uh, how many of y'all relationship go that deep with your family? As we have we have, have seen in a lot of this study in the last three weeks, a lot of these brothers and sisters, a lot of these uh, relationships in the family been so broken that one wanted the other one to die. But here Ruth is saying, 
I'm going to live with you. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to go all the way with you. That's loyalty. That's loyalty. Family, as uh, Webster describes family, uh, talks more about um, the same blood, the same descendants, the same ancestors. All right? Talking about family. Talking about family structure as in um, uh, the family has a head of a household and then you have the family members. Okay? But what I'm trying to show you this evening, family goes a little bit deeper than the blood running through your vein. It got a lot, of, lot to do with the character of the people in the family. That's where the, the, the intimacy, that's where the depth of, of the family bond uh, is, is in, is in the character of the people that's in the family. If you can't get a lot, if you can't sit in the same room as the people that have the same blood running through their vein, your family bond is broken. It, 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 it is not strong. You're not going to be able to stand against the enemy's attack on you and, and, and generations to come behind that because you have no bond. That family bond is broken. That blood don't mean nothing at that point. Because if you didn't have the same blood going running through your vein, you probably wouldn't even have no other association with one another. Nothing else. You probably wouldn't even cross paths with one another. But what I'm trying to tell you is, let's, let's get beyond just having the same blood. Let's, let's get back to being intimate with one another. Let's have a commitment to one another. Let's have joy with one another when God allows us to come together. We family. We family. I thank God for my family. You know, it's a blessing to be able to. You ever call somebody and they, you ever call somebody on the phone and, and you know, you can hear them smiling over on the other end. <laughs> They just happy they they just happy to hear from you. <laughs> and, uh, but on the other end, can, have you ever called somebody and, and like you really want to talk to them, but when they pick up the phone, they be like, "Hello." I mean, you can hear them like, "Man, I don't, I don't even want to talk." Now I'm talking about family. <laughs> Like you a bill collector, like you, you know, you calling by that, that, uh, vehicle warranty or something. Don't even want to talk to you. <laughs> Let me move on. But, all right. So what we get from Ruth's declaration to follow after, uh, Naomi, we get something deeper than, you know, what we know as family. We get we get the character of a woman who is committed to Naomi. You know, and that family, that family unit, you have got to be committed to one another. Now, sometimes, you know, and we talking about, we talking, we, we Christians here. All right, we blood washed believers. We, we Holy Ghost filled believers. We fire baptized believers in Christ. All right. We've been saved from our sin. And so now our character begins to uh, be in the likeness and the image of the God that saved us. All right. So now we we carry ourselves different. All right. So we should not be. Lord, listen to me. We should not be the ones carrying grudges. We should be the ones that's forgiving and showing love in spite of now there everybody got them uncles everybody got them them aunties everybody got them cousins everybody got somebody in their family that don't believe don't want to hear that foolishness that you talking about don't want to be involved in all that you know everybody every family got them you know you can talk you can say what you want to say i'm gonna do what i want to do how i want to do it 
Everybody, but you are the one that's saved. So you got to carry yourself as a Christian. You can't be the one getting the attitude. You can't be the one with, with, with you know, with the unforgiveness in your heart, knowing that God then forgave you through Jesus Christ. You can't be the one bitter and angry, you know, and 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 don't want to be around and don't want to share joy and love, don't want to reconcile. You can't be the one doing and acting like that. Because God has reconciled you back to him. Let's um let's go to um Romans 8. Romans 8. We're gonna continue this uh this talk about the intimacy of, of true family. Alright. It's a blessing to have the you know to have um you know family members where you know what you with the same blood running through your veins. That's a blessing. All right, that's a blessing to have, you know, that kind of family. But it's a sad thing when you got people with the same blood that can't get along. That's sad. That's bad. And we got to get that stuff. We got to get it straightened out. We got to get it. We got to get our act together, brothers and sisters. All right, Romans 8. And I'm going to read and um, I'm going to start... Reading at the number, uh, verse number 14. Romans 8, verse 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have re received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. <laughs> The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Ain't that a blessing? I stated once, I briefly, I stated once, uh, one of our studies that uh, uh, we were alienated from God, outcast. All right? We didn't belong in the family of God because of sin. Sin kept us on the outside of the family. But he said, for as many as are led, that are led by the Spirit of God, they are what? They are now the sons of God. All right? And you have not received a spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. See, he has accepted us by the blood of Jesus Christ. Our salvation causes us to, to inherit the spirit of adoption. Which is the Holy Spirit, which brings us into the family of God. And what is that saying? Now we have intimacy with the Father. We have a relationship, a right relationship with the Father. Notice in this scripture, if and you know those of you that, that read along, or you can go back and look at it at your leisure. Notice in this scripture, um, it says verse 15. For you have not received the spirit of bondage, again, the fear. Notice that that spirit is in lowercase, all right, which is just talking about the spirit of bondage, all right? That's not a deity. The spirit is just a spirit, like an evil spirit, okay? Because God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a, of a power and a love and a sound mind. All right, but notice, read on. It said, but you have received the spirit of adoption. The spirit there is in capital, all right, capital letters. Why? Because that's the deity. You have, you have received the spirit of the living God, which has adopted us into the family. And see, brothers and sisters, I can associate with this because I have physically been adopted into a family, all right? I was adopted, all right? And, you know, that's not something I'm ashamed of. It was a blessing come from God, okay? And, and I, I love my mother and father. You know, I highly respect them. But God had this thing set up, set up so that I can understand certain things, so I can be involved in, in certain things. And, 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 and I was adopted into this family and they received me and taught me the things and ways of God. They showed me love and, and, and commitment and loyalty 
and showed me what a family bond is all about. And we didn't have no blood the same. But I would always hear, I didn't birth you, but I, I love you as if you were my own. Lord have mercy. That's the spirit of adoption. Now God, in, he, he gives us that spirit of adoption as well. God, because of our sins, has he could reject us. But by the grace of God, by the blood of Jesus Christ, when we come to him, he washes us from our sin. He casts all that, that, that filth away from us and he adopts us into the family of God. And now we are led by his spirit. We become what? The Bible says the sons of God, the children of the most high. That's a blessing. And that's an intimate relationship we have now with the Father. We cannot let that bond be broken. <laughs> Hallelujah. We, we have to cultivate our relationship with God. We have to constantly try to do the will of our Father. Let me go a little deeper because I know our time is running out. Again, it's... It says, you have not received a spirit of bondage again to fear. You have no fear now. Why? Because you are, the ch you are a child of the Most High God. <laughs> and he's going to protect you. He's going to cover you and keep you. And in the family, Lord have mercy, we have to learn how to protect one another. Be there for one another. We have to learn when one don't have, the other ones that have will Help that one that don't have out until they're able. Not sit back and talk about them. When one part of the family fall, the, the other members of the family hold him up. Not sit back and, and judge him and, and ridicule him. The family is supposed to be there for one another. Not, not no spirit of fear. Not, you know, one in who I'm going to depend on. You got all these Family members that, that got it going on. I, and I'm not talking, you know, about people like, you know, every family got, you know, ticks in their family. You know, parasites, if you will, in their family that, that leech off one another. But we're not talking about, we, we don't want abusive families. We want to learn how to respect one another. All right? God adopts us into the family. We don't belong there, but God adopts us into the family. Looking beyond our faults, <laughs> forgiving our sins, and adopts us into the family of God. And guess what he calls us? He calls us his children. <laughs> We're no longer strangers, but we are his children. Hallelujah. That's a blessing. When, when he, can, he can take us in and treat us, you know, like children. Not outcasts, but treat us intimately and raise us. Look, look how deep this thing go. It say the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. That we are what? The children of God. And, and if children then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So now we in the family of God. And guess what? We inherit all the blessings that, that God promised Abraham. Isaac, Jacob. All them blessings that he blessed them with. Guess what? Now we in the family of God. And we inherit all them blessings. Even until now. <laughs> That's the intimacy of, of the family of God. Alright. So let me let me go to another scripture here in um in uh in Mark, Mark chapter 3, before we before we end up. Before we end up. Now everybody can't. Everybody, everybody can't say that they are a child of God. You know. Because the devil got children too. You can read it in the gospel of John. Jesus asked the people. He said. Why don't you understand my speech? Why you don't understand my words? Even because of you are of your father, the devil. He was a liar from the beginning. <laughs> and the same lies he, and, and, and works that he do, you will do also. Why? Because you are his children. 
<laughs> you you are and and what God is saying is if we are the children of God, then guess what? We ought to look like him. Come on now. Look at your 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 physical family. You know your blood family, your earthly family. All of you got features, something big head, big eyes, big nose, a little ear, or something. All you got the same, some kind of feature, because you you resemble you. You can look at them and say you you are you are so and so, ain't you? Because you resemble it. You resemble them. The same thing. The Bible says we are in the likeness and image of God. When we become, when we come to Christ and give our life to Christ and you know become Christians and children of God, guess what? We be, our character now because God is invisible. We can't see Him. Yeah. Now our character begins to look like God. So when people see us and how we love one another and how we embrace one another and how we forgive one another and how we got joy, unspeakable joy, how we have peace in our life, how we bring peace and make peace, then people will see, you must be a Christian, ain't you? I don't wear crosses all around my neck and Jesus hats and, and, and God, you know, the my uh Jesus is my co-pilot all on my ride, you know, all that. I, I don't do all that. What I do to show that I'm a Christian is live it. Help somebody along the way. Love my neighbor as I love myself. Do unto others as you will have them to do unto you. Love your enemies. Pray for them that, that despitefully use you. That's, that's the kind of stuff you do to show you that you are a child of the Most High God. All right. Mark. Mark chapter number three. And we're still talking about uh, the intimacy of the family. We're we still talking about what really makes us family. That's, that's what I want to get down to the bottom, the bottom of this evening. All right. And, and I want you to, and I always invite you to take a self-evaluation Um you know, of your life and the, the subjects we, we, we are discussing. Um, what, what are you bringing to the table, you know, as, as it pertains to your family? Are you a peacemaker or are you a troublemaker in your, within your family? Are you the one that's saying, uh, you know, let's get together. We got to love one another. Let's put our differences aside. Are you that one? Or are you the one that's stirring up the pot every time you get together? Mad. Won't even go. Which one are you within your family? All right. So Mark chapter 3. Uh, I'm beginning reading that verse number 31. The Bible says, there came then his brethren and his mother, <clears throat> and standing without, sent unto, him, sent unto him, calling him. And the multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, your mother and your brothers without seek for you. Okay? And Jesus answered and said to them, Who is my mother or my brothers? And he looked round about on them that sat about him and said, Behold, my mother and my brothers, for whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and my mother. Now that's deep. Now he wasn't discounting Mary. He wasn't disrespecting Mary, his mother, or his brothers. Y'all know he had... Um, half brothers. And I say half because he was the son of the living God. Okay? So Joseph technically wasn't his father. Um, so, but he wasn't disrespecting his earthly family. But what he was saying is the depths of my family don't stop with Mary and my, my physical brothers. There's a commitment involved when it's talking about my family. 
my brothers, my sisters, my mother. I don't just dedicate, you know, I don't just show respect to this set and then the rest of the people in the world, I ain't got no respect for as it pertains to family. See, we are an extended family. Whoever do, does the will of the father, the same as my brothers, my sisters. That's why we call each other brothers and sisters in the church. That's why we have mothers of the church. That's why, you know, and all of us have what? One thing in common, and that's the father which art in heaven. That's why Jesus taught us to pray. He taught us to pray our father which art in heaven because we embrace the same father and <laughs> praise the Lord. The good thing is he embraces us as his dear children. And these relationships that we have, you know, and, and, and some of you can relate. And, and it's a sad thing. I'm going to leave on this note. I'm going to leave on this note. It's a sad thing. And, and I pray for each and every family that's involved, that's listening to these studies, that you, you take the initiative as a child of the living God to try, to try to strengthen those bonds within your family, your blood family. Then you can strengthen the bond of, of your extended family, your church family, your community, and all that. Okay? So... There, there are people on the outside that'll be nicer and more considerate than your own family members. And that should not be. There are people, uh, there are other people's children that'll show you more respect than your own sometimes. Lord, have mercy. And, and vice versa. We we we're nicer and more considered to other people's children than we are to our very own. More concerned that should not be. Other folks, you know, even married couples, there are people that'll show more kindness. Well, give a listening ear, and that's that that's a problem because you know that's when the enemy slip in. So married couples, y'all got to. Y'all got to talk. And I ain't talking about fuss talk. I'm talking about get to know each other like Adam and Eve did. <laughs> get to know each other. And then, you know, cre create that bond, that inseparable bond. Don't let nobody outside treat you better than you treat your own family. Come on now. We got to bring this thing back to perspective. All right. Because one thing about it, and I'm going to close on this note. One thing about it, as a child of God, nobody's going to treat God's children better than he is. <laughs> God, gonna, he going he gonna to do the best he can by his. I promise you that. He going to love you like nobody else can. Because we are a family. We ought to learn to love one another the way the Father loves us amen this concludes our family matters series and we pray in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ that brothers and sisters reconcile with your family members pray for one another restore that bond that unity within your family unit be concerned about each other be loyal to one another and committed to your family. Amen. And I promise you. Once you get that intimacy. Once you get it back. You'll realize. Ain't nobody. Ain't nothing going to separate this. This is necessary. This is necessary. Our family means more than anything. And we got to. We got to bring that thing back together. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Y'all have a. A happy and blessed and safe Thanksgiving with uh with your family. We pray. We know it's a lot of bereavement uh in our in our land. And we pray God give you strength to get through the, the holiday season and that God will restore the joy 
and he'll wrap his loving arms around you, give you peace that passes all understanding. And remember, I love you, but God loves you much, much more. Y'all have a blessed evening.